I need your goth girlfriend. So this happened the other day when I was on a date with my SO. To be honest, I'm surprised my SO didn't murder this mofo. So some quick background. One, I'm a living meme, a big titty goth GF. And yes, when that was a thing, a lot of guys did try and get with me as if I was a prize to be won and it was awful for a while. My SO, for lack of better words, is a redneck. I mean, Carhartt jeans covered in paint, mud, and oil. Rip sleeve flannel, you get the idea. We are a weird couple, but I love him more than anything. So we were having a small date night. Sometimes we do every week, so no matter how busy our week gets, we still have time for each other. Most of the time, we just go to fast food places because I'm cheap and it really doesn't matter where I am as long as I'm with him. So we were at a more fancy place than our normal spot. We chose a cute mum and pop shop. It was kind of busy, but we were able to get seated. As we were eating, I can see my SO mean mugging someone. I asked him what is going on. He didn't reply, just kept looking over in a different direction. I look over and see a guy who looks like he's trying super hard to look over at us. Babe, was he staring at us? My SO just nods. Okay, well, I need to use the bathroom. I will be back. I got up and went out of my way so I'm not in the guy's line of sight when I walk past. When I get back, I see that my SO's face is bright red with a look of, I'm about to kill you, as the guy who was staring at us was yelling at him. I couldn't hear, but the looks on the other customer's faces told me he wasn't being nice. When I walk up, ready to tear this guy a new one, I hear, I need a goth girlfriend. All my friends will be super jealous if I walk up with her on my arm. I mean, look at her tits. They gotta be a D at least. Come on, man, you don't deserve her. My SO sees me and smiles. He knows the absolute trash storm I'm about to rain onto this poor guy. When the guy turns around, his face goes completely white. So girls are just trophies for you to hang off your arm. That's how you see me. I'm just a big titty bimbo you can show off, then throw away when you are done. Is that how you treat women? How would your mother feel if she knew that her baby went out here looking at women like objects? I would feel completely ashamed if I was you. And for your info, jackass, I'm a double D and you would never be able to have them because my amazing SO already has claims on them. Look at me and him again and I won't be so nice. The guy was cowering in his seat as I yelled at him. No one stopped me, possibly because they thought this guy needed a verbal ass beating as well, or they were just scared. He got up, tail between his legs. We finished our meal without any other problems, and on the car ride home, my SO looked over at me and said, this is why I fell in love with you. You got a temper just as bad as mine. To any guys out there who want a big titty goth GF, don't be an ass, we are people too, not some trophy. EM demands ride on $10,000 quad bike, right after a crash. So for some background, when this story took place, I was about 13. I had recently moved to a farm which required a quad bike. I had bought a $10,000 bike off Trade Me, which is the New Zealand equivalent of eBay, and had it delivered. I was also in the progress of meeting all our neighbours at the time, the majority of whom were pretty nice, except one more to follow in the story. So I was in the paddock feeding some animals when I hear my dog yelp. I turn my head to look at him, completely forgetting that I am driving at over 35 miles an hour near a line of trees. As the bike crashes, I jump off, just before it rolls, which likely would have killed me if I was still on it when it happened. The bike was severely damaged, the front was horribly warped, the handlebars were crooked, and the battery was ripped out. I start to fix the battery when EM runs over, closely followed by EK, who was dragging my dog by the collar. The following conversation ensues. EM. Excuse me, may we please have a go on the motorbike? No, sorry, and can you please let go of my dog? They completely lost it. Who the F do you think you are telling my daughter what to do? Can't you see? She is literally choking him. EM shoves me out of the way and jumps on the quad bike. Thankfully, the key came out in the crash, so she couldn't have gone anywhere. At this point, I lost it. I have mild ADHD, so I'm surprised that I even made it this far. I wrenched my dog out of EK's grasp. Leave now or I'm calling the cops. EK apparently didn't like this and threw a punch, which hit me in the neck. I kind of overreacted by kicking her in the stomach before flipping her on the ground. I had done four years of karate and two years of judo at that point. EM runs at me, but I get out of the way and grab the keys to the motorbike. You can leave now or I will call the cops. They got up and ran home. In summary, it turns out that the mother was wanted for trespassing and animal abuse. We found out a year later when she was arrested for a different crime. I still haven't heard what the result of the court case was. EK ended up in foster care until the trial was over and I was punished by my parents for damaging the quad bike. Give my angel your $300 Nintendo Switch, $200 AirPods, and your $3,000 laptop. So this story all begins with me buying my Switch and AirPods with my own money, which I'd indeed worked hard for. 
At the time where I lived, which is where this story will take place, we had these awfully nice neighbours from what it seemed, but this sure taught me that this was not true. So me and EM's son, who is two years younger than me, 11 at the time, were playing outside when I mentioned to him I want to go inside and play Super Smash on my Nintendo Switch, which he agreed to, and his mother came as well as she didn't want him to be alone. She watched us play and was eyeballing my airpods and asked me what they were. Oh, those are my airpods, they are wireless earbuds that I bought. Oh, that's cool. James? Not his real name. Come look at these. Whoa, those are cool. Can I try them? Um, sure, you can try them. Let me just go grab my phone so they will work. I went to go grab my phone when I hear them whispering, so I come back fast with my phone. Hey, I got my phone, we can try them now. Okay, James, try them on. EK had put them in his ears and began to walk around while I played music. He then looks at EM and nods his head, to which EM nods her head back. He obviously fakes stubbing his toe and then falling and hurting his back, and begins crying. Mom, I hurt my arm. I think it's broken. Oh my God, my baby, are you okay? She then says to me, Oh my God, you devil. You tried to hurt my baby with those dangerous pod airs. I laughed in my head at that. That could have killed my angel. Ow, mommy, it hurts. What do my AirPods have to do with your son falling? I then try to be reasonable and walk over to her son to try to help him get up, even though I knew he faked it. I grabbed his hand to help him up and he shook his head back crying. Ow, mummy, he punched me in the face. I think my jaw is broken. Oh my god, I'm calling the cops on you. At this point, I'm honestly confused on what's going on and beg to the mum. No, don't call the cops, please. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. At this point, I'm beginning to break down a bit as I have anxiety and the EM for some reason begins to freak out with terrible acting skills. I cannot believe you ha, ha, have done this. You know what? You owe us. Yeah, you owe me. I'll pick out what I want. Okay, baby, what do you want? He points at my Switch, my AirPods, and my $3,000 laptop and says all of that. What the heck? No way I'm giving you almost $4,000 worth of my stuff. Well, you should not have made him trip and punch him in the face. At this point, I called the cops and they told me to wait while they had people come. Good, call the cops, then they can arrest you. Yeah, it was a bad idea for me to call them. I might leave because I'm scared about getting arrested. You can't leave. Watch me. I walked out the front door as I'd already noticed the cop car putting up. The cops entered the house and began talking to the woman. She pleaded. That young boy tripped and punched my son in the face. The cop looked at the boy and noticed there was nothing wrong with him. Police officer. Are you sure, ma'am? Your son looks all right. Are you doubting me? I showed them the security camera footage and then the EM went ballistic and pushed me down on the ground in front of the cops and yelled, You lying SOB, you should go burn in heck. You wonder why you don't have any friends? Because you're an F. The cops then pushed her to the ground and handcuffed her. Her son grabbed my laptop and threw it to the ground, smashing it. What the F? That's what you get for hurting my mummy and me. The cops grabbed the boy and put him in handcuffs and they got 50 hours of community service and a $2,000 fine. With addition to having to pay for my laptop, they broke. I haven't seen them since. My son is sick, so he will be in front. My boyfriend and I were damn excited to watch Endgame at the cinema. He loves Marvel and all the movies. Oh, by the way, I've pre-checked this story. There are no spoilers, don't worry. We pre-booked our seats for us to be at the very back so we can get the full view of the screen. We enter the building and go to reception to get our tickets. We're standing in line as a mother with a small child starts shouting at staff and taking up a ridiculously long time. Here's the cast. EM, ES, BF, me, all standard stuff, and S is staff, P is person. EM. My son is ill and we did not have time to pre-book our seats, so we deserve to get our front row seats. Sorry miss, we can't do that. We can arrange My a- My son wants a front row seat so he can get a better view. Is it okay if you and your son get the second front row seats? Fine, but you owe me money. No, we don't. Here's your ticket. Finally, it's our turn. We tell them that we pre-booked our seats and we get our tickets. We see the mother dragging her crying son to the bathroom and I roll my eyes. My BF says, what's up with her? She's crazy. I hope we don't watch the same movie. Me too. My boyfriend and I get a couple of snacks, drinks and popcorn for the movie and it's almost time to get into the movie theatre. We get there, show the security guard our tickets that he scans and we get into the theatre. It's dark and cold and I came with a t-shirt. I see Karen Karen at the front of the movie theatre talking with someone. Oh no, not today. 
I walk to the front row seats. I demand this seat. I've booked it and you have no right to steal me and my son's seat. Then the person who was sitting in the seat says, uh, I booked this front row seat. No, you didn't. Show me your ticket. I won't if I don't want to. So I say, just get in your seat. The movie's gonna start soon. It's just a seat. It's just a seat? My son and I demand a front row seat and he needs it because he's ill. Why are you bringing a sick child to the cinema anyway? Your son can spread it. It's healthy to go outside when you're sick. You need oxygen to fight off the flu. I am dumbfounded. As am I. <laughs> if your son has the flu, go to the doctors and arrange an appointment to get a flu jab. Vaccines cause harm. Jesus said that it's better to have it natural. I've just encountered an anti mother. I can taste bile in my mouth. At this point, I've had enough and I storm off to my seat. My boyfriend asks me if I'm okay and I say yes. He tells me that he will report her to the security guard if she disturbs the whole cinema again. Endgame has started and we're having a great time. Still, no spoilers. My boyfriend is super hyped and I've already finished my first bucket of popcorn. All of a sudden, a child starts crying and it makes my ears bleed. No, not literally. My boyfriend says, do you think it's her son? Maybe. I stand up for a second and I see the son in Karen's lap, moving around and bawling his eyes out. He seemed seven earlier, but now he looks about two. I sit down and say, yup. This carries on for another 10 minutes or so. I can't hear anything over this demonic child shrieking. I need to go to the bathroom, so I stand up from my chair and tell my boyfriend I'll be right back. I walk out of the movie theatre and I'm absolutely happy that I'm not listening to Satan's call anymore. I get back from the bathroom and I'm shocked to hear her son crying even louder than before. The worst thing is, Karen isn't doing a single thing. I back out of the movie theatre for a moment and I notify a security guard about a child screaming in the movie. I'm pretty sure they can get kicked out like this. We both walk in the movie theatre again and point at Karen. I say it's the son on that blonde haired woman's lap. I sit down again. My boyfriend asks, did you tell security? Yes, I've had enough. I see the guard and Karen speaking to each other and he escorts Karen and the demon out of the building. I can hear the actual movie now and not be annoyed. Thank the Lord. The movie ends and it was great. It is around 4pm now, so we try to get out of the cinema as quickly as possible to avoid traffic. My boyfriend and I rush out of the movie theatre and we get to the escalator. Good. My legs are sore from sitting for too long, but someone caught my eye. A blonde haired woman holding hands with a child. Freaking Karen. If you look closely enough, you can see smoke coming out of my nostrils and ears. I can see the anti-vax mother. Let's try and avoid them, okay? Okay. We had difficulty doing that as the lobby was pretty small, but we got out before we suffered any longer. I hear police sirens. Oh, snap. The car stopped and entered the building. I don't want to know what happened. And that's the end of the story for now. I hope you liked it. Anyway, that is the end of another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, like, share and subscribe for more Reddit content from me.